And this is Dr. Roger Boger and Karen Boger. So this will start right now. Hi, I'm so grateful today to have an opportunity to come and share with you some thoughts and ideas that I've had uh, here today at the Life and Free Energy Conference. My name is Dr. Roger Boger, and I've been involved with wellness and health for 43 years, uh, having been practicing uh, in the free market in dentistry and then also building wellness centers on Hilton Head Island and just in general staying in touch with everything that's new. So I, I made some notes and uh, I, I feel that uh, we can be informal here today because this is really not about me and it's really about the world in general. I, uh, I was thinking about the, I, I was asked to talk about the future of intelligent medicine. And intelligent medicine would reminds me of a, of a poem, uh, one of my favorite poems by Percy by Shelley called Ozymandias. And it goes like this. Now, I met a traveler from an antique land who said two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand on the desert. Near them, on the sand, half sunk, a shattered visage lies whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of coal command tell well the passions of the sculptor ray, the hand that mocked them and the, the heart that fed and on the pedestal, these words appear. My name is Ozymandias, king of kings. Look on my works, you mighty in despair. Boundless and bare, the low and level sands stretch far, far away. And ladies and gentlemen, the reason that happened is because Ozymandias had no vision. And so he never believed that things would perish and break down. I recently spent some time with one of my favorite visionaries, uh, Dr. Michio Kaku a physicist and the originator of the, of the string theory. And you know, uh, today we have technology that will allow us to move and travel based on today's physics uh, throughout our Milky Way galaxy. I thought about it as he shared with us that we are on this uh, speck, of, speck of dust spinning through the cosmos Jacques Cousteau calls planet ocean, and we're being sucked along by the sun as it orbits around in the Milky Way galaxy. He said with today's science, there's a way that we can travel uh, to other parts of the Milky Way galaxy. One of the other things that really impressed me was the fact that he shared with us that we have uh, more cells in our body, 100 trillion cells, than there are in the universe. Now, think about that. You know, most people rather die than think. As a matter of fact, they do. Rene Descartes said, I think, therefore I am. Actually, he said, uh, dubito ergo sum, I doubt, therefore I am. So uh, think about the fact that we are like a universe, each one of us a universe. We are one with that universal energy that flows in us and through us and connects us to the energy of the earth. Now, at the risk of sounding really flowery and maybe pseudo-intellectual, you know, that, that's a true fact. And I know that all of you know that. So here we are, each of us a universe. We travel around uh, and connect with other universes that Michio Kaku calls the multiverse. So this pattern that we have is so basic and fundamental. This pattern of life, this pattern of our existence, this meat suit that we walk around in every day. You know, it is really merely just a smaller model of the universal force and energy that flows in us and through us and connects us to the energy of the earth. So with that as a rather lengthy segue introduction, my passion about sharing ideas with you today comes from uh, over 43 years of experience. And it comes as a result of a passion given to me by a Japanese fellow, Isamu Masuda from Fukuoka, Japan, in Oita Prefecture in the southernmost island of Japan. Well, he's changed my life forever. And um, it is with great respect that I honor him with you today. So, some other notes. I put down that um, um, there is a, a dynasty many, many years ago that stated this, which I wanted to share with you today, uh, that we uh, who are physicians who treat full-blown disease are inferior physicians. Inferior physicians treat full-blown disease. With all due respect, 
to my kids who are allopathically trained physicians and so forth. It also said in this treatise that um, mediocre doctors treat disease as it first begins. But it, then it says that superior doctors uh, prevent disease. And you know, interestingly enough, for those of you who aren't aware of that, that's not new. That's 2,600 years old from the Nai Qing Dynasty, the first Chinese medical textbook. Well, it's kind of come full circle, hasn't it? Because now we know that superior doctors and the future of intelligent medicine should and will be focused on preventing disease, which is really just a disorder of the body uh, that can result from epigenetic changes from our environment and food we eat and so forth. So I wanted to share that Nai Qing Dynasty thing. It was in uh, the first book that I wrote, uh, Your Einstein Complex, Awaken Your Inner Genius to Live Your Dreams, because I thought it was so relevant and poignant. Well, so given that, today our Western philosophy about this meat suit that we're walking around in is that it's a chemical entity. And all of you who are my age, and I'm in my mid-70s, all of you who are in my age remember studying the electron transport system and glycolysis and, and those parts of the metabolic pathways that today are much more complicated. But in, in those days, we thought of this body as one that is a chemical entity with all these chemical reactions that have to do with um, metabolism, cellular metabolism. And so following that understanding, what we did was we became more astute at identifying the fact that there may be a breakdown in one of these chemical pathways. And when one of those chemical pathways broke down, we interceded with another chemical. And uh, that chemical gave birth to a resurgence an acceleration of the pharmaceutical industry. Now, I say that with all due respect to the pharmaceutical industry because uh, there are some things in acute situations where your life can be saved with some of the astute uh, mechanisms and understandings of the body chemically through pharmaceuticals. So I, I mean no disrespect to, to that at all. However, I think that when we look at the Eastern philosophies, the people of Asia and the Pacific Rim, they see this body as a physical energy entity, not a chemical entity. And what that means is that they become more astute with moving the chi or the energy around the body. You know, uh, the departments of Qigong are bigger than the departments of acupuncture in Korea. And I remember when acupuncture first came to the North American continent, to the United States, we thought it was a little bit like voodoo or certainly different because we didn't understand the chakras and the meridians and things like that. And so now, Qigong, which is the movement of Qi through the body that you all are probably aware of, and those departments are bigger than the departments of acupuncture. I think now that with some of the advancements today, in research in companies like So Sound Solutions, where they uh, change, they move energy through your body with music and sound at 432 megahertz, which actually can have a profound impact on the bones of the body. You can increase the density of the bones in your body, and in essence, affect changes uh, with um, the connections between nerve cells and much, much more. Again, you know, this. Uh, this is an energetic body as well as a chemical body, a physical energy body. There's a, a researcher named Neshi who, ha who has NONS, and, uh, GANS, G-A-N-S, and what they do is they uh, change the frequency of your environment to put your body in a different vibrational state to function more optimally. There are things like pain pens. There's a company that has pain pens. And the copper coils that are wrapped around, and instead of becoming a resistor um, with the, the coils, as you normally expect, uh, they actually project energy and can change you. I, I've spent many, many years, I have a CompuServe database compilation of all articles written on magnetic field therapy compiled at the Beth Israel Hospital at Harvard. 
I've researched the NIH Compendium on Alternatives with two full sections on bioelectromagnetics and medicine. I have seen with my own eyes um, the changing of uh, the pain in people using magnetic energy, static field magnetic energy, not pulsed magnetic fields, ones that actually change the resting potential of nerves so that the cerebral cortex cannot interpret the, the stimulation as pain. In other words, uh, the pain is gone. Your perception of the pain is gone. And even today, I spend time with people who are having uh, discomfort, and I share with them uh, magnetic energy. I sleep on magnetics uh, every night. I have far infrared quilts that are sprayed with cotton and polyester um, uh, with um, a uh, platinized ceramic. And it actually is sensitive to 98.6, the body's temperature. And what happens is that as the body gets warm, it acts as a heat sink and pulls the temperature away from the body. As the body gets cold, it acts as a reflector and reflects the heat back into the body. This is found in astronaut suits and it keeps them comfortable uh, where they are in the, uh, on the way to the space station, etc. So um, another note is that uh, I wanted to share with you um, a conversation an example of a conversation uh, who, uh, with a, a physician who may practice internal medicine today. I mean, you may go to an emergency room and he or she might say to you, well, gosh, um, what's your uh, primary complaint? Well, I, have, I, I've, I feel dizzy. I feel uncomfortable. I feel uh, I have pain here. I can't, I can't straighten up. My back hurts or whatever. That's a primary complaint. The diagnosis is completed, prescription is done, uh, and released. I call that the cut it off, cut it out, burn it off drug effect. And nobody really wants to go there. Although, uh, if, if you have to go there in our Western medicine, which is really the best at urgent care and emergency, following that uh, standard of care, primary complaint, diagnose, treat, and release. I, uh, I wanted to go one step further and enter kind of a little dialogue with you. I, uh, I was saying that um, this is a, a, an example of a conversation between a, uh, an intelligent physician, man or woman who's a physician, uh, in today's environment of advancing uh, to an integrative functional and then a more advanced uh, situation. For example, if, um, if Joe or Mary in the audience, if you were uh, my physician and I came into your office and you said, I have some bad news for you, and you have been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Now here in Ohio, you could go to the James Clinic and you can have chemo and radiation. And he would say that, you can go and do that if you wish. But before you do that, might I ask you a few questions and allow you to spend 90 minutes with me, think about that, so that I can tell you my story. If I can tell you my story, you might get at the cause of my disorder, uh, body disorder, which we call dis-ease, Ill, Ill at ease. My physician in this case, uh, if we're role playing this, might say to me, well, the bad news is you have pancreatic cancer, we can go to the, uh, and have chemo and radiation if you wish. But before you do that, let me ask you a few questions. Do you have any stress in your life? <clears throat> and get to thinking, I think, well, gosh, you know, I, I do have stress in my life. Uh, and everybody does to different levels and different degrees, right? So because stress, as you all know, downregulates your body's immune system and its ability to deal with disease, dis-ease. So... He would want to know whether or not I'm under stress. And if I am under stress, he or she would recommend that I have some counseling for the stress <clears throat> to help myself along, to uh, eliminate that as one of the causative agents for my disease. He or she might say to me, well, Roger, do you have, uh, what do you eat? And I would share with them what I eat. And if in that diet, he or she found that it was rich in sugar and gluten, lots of alcohol. Uh, he or she would then be able to deduce right away as part of the puzzle 
that my body's probably inflamed. And inflammation is a common etiologic factor for heart disease and, and acid pH. Uh, cancer cells love an acid pH, diabetes, and so forth. A lot of the things that we call different diseases are the body's reaction or lack thereof to the inflammatory process. Heat, redness, pain, swelling, and loss of function. Calor, dolor, rubor, tumor, functionalata, we were taught in school. So make no mistake about it, if people in the literature is, is replete with this, if, um, if you have coronary artery disease, um, uh, traditional uh, chemical allopathic people might indicate that while well, your cholesterol level is high and that's causing your arteries to be clogged. But make no mistake about it, ladies and gentlemen, and you probably all know this, if your stratum intima, the lining of your coronary arteries is inflamed, then the job of the cholesterol is to go there and patch it over, patch over the inflamed stratum intima in your coronary arteries. And in doing so, if this represents your uh, ascending, uh, descending coronary artery, posterior circumflex coronary artery or whatever, and uh, there's inflammation on the walls, the, the cholesterol will go and patch it over and patch it over and over and over and over and keep patching it over until the vessel occludes. And of course, that's a myocardial infarction, heart attack, and not good. I mean, it could take your life uh, if it's in the widow maker or whatever. So uh, given that understanding, your cholesterol could be elevated. Your HDL-LDL ratio could not be perfect. However, we know that the bad guy in this case is the inflammation. And what causes that? The sad standard American diet. I think if you uh, want to think about a diet that may be beneficial, I know Andrew Weil feels that the Mediterranean diet is excellent. I feel like it is. We grow our own vegetables outside. I have kale out there and uh, fresh lettuce, and cantaloupes and things that really taste so much better than those um, frankenfood uh, vegetables that have no taste at all. So that's the second question. Number one, to get back to the role play, do you have any stress in your life? Number two, what do you eat? Number three, how do you sleep? Because sleeping is when our bodies repair themselves. You should um, be along with sleep, and I uh, failed to mention this, if your, if your diet is not a perfect diet, it's okay to nutritionally supplement. Because if you're not growing your own veggies and food, our foods are grown on chemicalized and depleted soils. And they really have lost a lot of their nutrition. Consequently, it makes good sense to uh, use a good healthy cell, bioavailable, nutritional uh, component to your diet. Uh, and um, the other day I was, I was having uh, challenges. I had some muscle cramping. And um, I spoke with uh, one of my physician friends who is uh, a, uh, a naturopathic doctor. And uh, he said, well, what's your magnesium level like? I said, yeah, I don't, I don't know really. So I went and I, I took some uh, a magnesium and by golly, there it was the, 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 uh, the tension and the, the spasm in the muscles went away. So let's get back to the role play. So uh, again, stress level, what do you eat? Exercise. Uh, sitting, I was just speaking to my wife today, you know, and, and we said uh, sitting is the new smoking. If you sit on your derriere all day in front of your computer and look at the screen, um, you're not moving. And the body is made to move. And every day, people should be walking or doing those exercises that the body will tolerate. I think as you move along in the different decades, those exercises can change. But nonetheless, exercise is critical to good health. Uh, I used to uh, run. I, I didn't like it, but I used to run when I was in my 30s. And in my 
uh, 40s. And then what I did was I started to bike ride because the running was hurting my knees pounding the pavement. And I've taught skiing for 40 years, and I love to snow ski, so I want to preserve my knees and hips. So I took the biking. And uh, that's for this decade, and maybe the next decade I'll take the swimming, which is even kinder to the joints. But um, listen to what your body says and do those things that keep you physically active. That would be another part of the dialogue from my physician in this role play. Another one might be, you know, what's your relationship with your family? Uh, your wife and your children. You know, um, uh, I, I am blessed to be married to one of the most incredible women in the world. If you're not blessed that way, um, then um, I try to make the best of what it is. But for me, that's a very, very critical way to be able to feel life's energies and to feel complete and your relationship with your children as well. I just had my grandchildren here for a week and admittedly after a week I was exhausted. We went to the zoo, we went to the COSI Science Center here in Columbus, uh, we went to the movies, we did miniature golf, we, we were swimming at the pool, we were fishing in the pond behind my house, I got fish hooks caught in my thumb uh, we have a snapping turtle. The snapping turtle was eating the fish. The hooks were flying everywhere, and the fish were in the air. <laughs> but uh, th that, that is uh, a relationship that I'll cherish forever. Uh, imagine that, um, uh, uh, cherishing having a fish hook caught in your thumb. But uh, the point is, is that those kind of relationships you, you can't take back. Another question that my physician may ask of me is, what's your relationship with source? I point up and out because, you know, it may be uh, you may attend a synagogue or a Catholic church or, or a Presbyterian church or a New Age church or no church at all. But whatever it is, your connection to source is critical. Your realization that we are an extension of that source, that we are one with it, is critical to your well-being. Knowing that you are one with it. Well, compare that experience that I just shared with you with going and spending an average of 2.6 minutes. Uh, what's your primary complaint? Okay, you've got, um, let me do this blood test, you've got this, here's your prescription, see you later. To finalize that role play, let's say that I do go and have chemo and radiation and it shrinks the cancer, and it is surgically excised. And maybe you know people like this. Two or three years later, I go in and say, oh, Roger, I'm sorry to tell you this, but apparently the cancer metastasized. It showed up somewhere else. Wrong answer. Because if my physician, if he or she had found the cause of my system being weak and not able to fight off those malignant cells, then it would not have returned. But because we never found the cause, it did return. I hope, I know this is resonating with a lot of you uh, in here uh, today at the conference. Well, um, I think that um, I, I wanted to speak a bit about the relationship between mind, body, and spirit. Now, when I speak about the mind, I'm not talking about the cerebral cortical material, uh, your brain. I'm talking about your mind. So the mind uh, can be... Uh, likened to, uh, I always use a stick figure. Uh, imagine me as just a head and a body, two arms and two legs, and um, separate my head by drawing a line between my two external auditory meatae, my ears, and above that line is my conscious mind, and below that is my subconscious mind, and make the head really big, and then make the body really small on a scale. So by the, by the mind, I mean uh, that um, 
we have um, certain skills in our brain that we heretofore called mind. We can see, hear, smell, taste, and touch. Well, that really doesn't resonate too much with me, too heavily with me. It doesn't separate us apart from anything. I have a dog and cats here that can see, hear, smell, taste, and touch. What I'm talking about is what makes us different as human beings. It's the higher faculties of the mind, memory, reason, will, perception, imagination, and intuition. Those are the things that separate us from other forms of life, as far as we know. So in your mind, the top part of the mind is the conscious mind, which is the thinking mind. It takes in ideas, and it takes in information, it processes the information, and it sends it to the subconscious mind, which is really the manifester of our reality, the subconscious mind. And that is our feeling mind as well. So we think about something in our conscious mind, and that thought migrates to the subconscious mind, which creates a feeling. The feeling causes us to take action. The action produces a result. We see the result with our conscious mind, and we either accept and reinforce that, or we don't. We don't. So when I'm talking about mind, body, spirit, I'm talking about that mind. It's Thurman Fleet's model from 1934, which is still relevant today, Dr. Thurman Fleet. I learned it from Bob Proctor. Uh, one of uh, my good friends uh, and one of my earlier mentors, and we still talk today. The body, the body is merely an extension of universal energy, and the more we learn about this body, the better off we will be. And the spirit is the connection. It connects everything. It connects us to that universal energy. So when you hear people in intelligent medicine talking about mind, body, spirit, they're not just dealing with the meat suit that we're walking around in that we call the body. There is no separation. It is all universally connected, and it is that uni universal force, again, that flows in us and through us and connects us to the energy of the earth. I think as practitioners, if you do not take the time to deal with that component, spirit, and the mind, then you're missing the boat. You really are missing the boat. Take the time to listen and uh, to your patience. I, uh, I wanted to speak for a moment uh, about epigenetic changes, that is changes in our genes that, can, that are a result of our environment. Uh, ever since, uh, e even since Flint, Michigan, and the problems that they're having up there with their poor quality of water, even though there's been a new initiative to send uh, a few hundred million dollars up to Michigan to take care of that, uh, and what's happening with the Dakotas right now, uh, the, the water is sacred uh, to our Native American brothers and sisters, and we need to treat it as such. I think uh, my personal response in, uh, about water is that bottled water, people say, well, I drink bottled water. Well, you know, is it in a number seven plastic container or is it not? Bottled water is not very regulated. It's less regulated than municipal water authority water that comes out of the fossil. So, you know, what is the quality of your water? And it is so critical because our bodies are 78% water. Our brains are 80% water. So we are what we drink. And so garbage in, garbage out. So make sure that uh, you can gain access to a water purification system, system that eliminates pollutants from the water because if you're putting in bad water into the meat suit, you're gonna get a bad meat suit. And, and make sure that you drink enough. There is a school of thought that, gee, I should drink, uh, uh, eight or ten glasses of water a day. Not necessarily. My good friend, Dr. Ted Emanuel in Jamaica, a naturopathic physician, said that if you always do that and your body doesn't perspire, doesn't need as much water, you'll create a spongy kidney. You'll overload your kidney. So um, have the amount of water that you feel is necessary. Uh, when you're thirsty, drink the water, uh, given that you're not diabetic, etc. Um, the air that we breathe uh, is critical. 
because it also can create changes. There is a group in uh, Switzerland right now that is creating, they're creating microchips. I just spoke with the gentleman today over in, uh, in uh, Luzerne, and they have microchips that alter the vibration of your immune system and the food that we eat and our air and all the other pollutants that can create epigenetic changes uh, in our bodies. So I, th I think that as uh, care providers, as physicians and healthcare professionals, you need to avail yourself to that information. If you need more information about it, uh, feel free to email me, drrogerboger at gmail.com. That's D as in David R, and then Roger, R-O-G-E-R, Boger, B-O-G-E-R, at gmail.com. I would love to interface with you, and uh, I, I understand that at the end, uh, there'll be some time for questions. Um, I also uh, talk about the fabrics that we put on our bodies. Uh, if it's synthetic fabrics, not as good. If it's fabric that come from natural sources, much better. All of these things have an impact on, on this body and on your body as well. Um, I spoke earlier about additional technologies. Uh, Keshe, K-E-S-H-E. You may want to look him up if you don't already know about it, and about GANS, G-A-N-S, the pain pen. It, it also is a plasma energy flow that you may or may not be aware of. If not, uh, look him up, get to me, I'll share with you his website. They have wellness chambers uh, where you walk in between two walls and the frequency is such that it changes your vibrational frequency to one that is healthier. Uh, again, make sure that we become more progressive and are in harmony, again, with the uh, Eastern philosophy of, uh, that includes Reiki and Qigong and acupuncture, things like that, zero-point industry and energy, uh, light energy and wellness chambers and, and water from 30, 300,000 uh, feet below the surface and has a profound impact on changing our bodies. I, uh, I wanted to share a couple of more points. Um, the keys to, I think, world peace. I think we can all understand today that there's a shift happening on the planet, whether it's divinely guided, spiritually guided, guided by uh, uh, Pleiades, guided by Gaia, guided by whatever. There is a, 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 a shift in energy. And it's, uh, it's a, a delayed vibrational response to John Lennon's full-page ad in the New York Times uh, many years ago, decades ago. But he took out a whole-page ad, if you remember, and uh, there were only... Uh, a few words on the page with his picture, and it said, all we need is love. All we need is love. I think that uh, I wanted to share a, a couple of keys, in my humble opinion, to world peace that includes the L word, the love word. Number one, um, if, we, if, our, if we control our own power, if we're off the grid, there will not be any oil, um, natural gas, OPEC, Middle Eastern fracking, disturbance of the earth. And because there won't be this demand um, monetarily, uh, that would help to ease some of the tension, in my humble opinion. The second is food supply. There's enough money on the planet to, food, to feed every human being on the planet, yet it's not being done. Uh, people who are hungry are desperate, and people who keep them that way are ignorant. So in my, again, humble opinion, I think that if we have not only the control our own power off-grid, but also 
if we supply food to every person on planet Earth, we'll come a long way to world peace. Another one is clean water. Again, you know, we talked about the, the importance of water and how, it, how vital it is to our existence, how vital it is to the existence of, uh, of movement. Uh, for example, water-powered vehicles. Uh, I, you know, it's here. The technology is here. Uh, Tesla will probably have a water-powered vehicle if it doesn't already. I, I really got a big kick out of the fact that I learned that uh, uh, hemp um, BMW is making cars in Canada using hemp, and if there's a dent in the door, it pops right back out again. And by the way, uh, speaking about hemp, I hope that all of you are aware of the, the value of hemp and uh, its legalization is coming. There are 20 more states that are in November uh, this year and will be voting on the value of CBD oil. I, I know I've done lots of research and probably all of you in this room have done that too. Uh, the key centers of research are in Israel. You know, the endocannabinoid system with all its receptors in the brain and other parts of the body is very, very, very important. And it's important because the studies have shown that it has value, and these are great studies in post-traumatic stress disorder, and things like Dravet's uh, um, out in uh, Colorado, uh, this, uh, I think it's the Stewart or Stevens brothers, uh, have a wonderful, wonderful uh, grow there. And what they're finding is that here's this CBD uh, rich hemp that has very little THC, and they thought, heck, who would want to buy this, you know, because uh, it's not psychotropic. But now we know that it has incredible, incredible value. On a personal note, I can share with you, since we're all brothers and sisters looking to accomplish the same goal, on my back, I had a, um, what I know was, uh, started out as a mole, but it became a pigmented nevus, and the surface of it changed texture. I made, I knew exactly what it was from my, years of diagnosing oral cancer, et cetera. So I made an appointment to have it removed surgically. But while I was waiting the three weeks or so for the appointment to manifest, my wife said, why don't you take some of the CBD oil and put it on there, which I did. And I'm here to tell you that um, lesion, that which I'm sure was a melanoma because I know what I'm looking at and feeling and touching, that was gone in three weeks. Um, so I, I stand here before you grateful for, um, for God's plants and um, all the, the benefits of something like uh, hemp oil. The fourth thing that's a key to world's peace is wellness. And that's why we're all here today at this forum. Life and energy, conference. Life is a function of quality of life. What's your quality of life? What quality of life are you sharing with other people on the planet? I think that all of us, we are so close to being able to transcend easily 100 years. Easily 100 years. A good friend of mine, Dr. Vince Giampapa, one of the founders of the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine, uh, is building a clinic in Costa Rica. And uh, we know uh, the value of those uh, stem cells, uh, the stem cell precursors, uh, the growth factors that come along with them. We know the value of telomerase 65 DM and lengthening telomeres. Ladies and gentlemen, we were this close to that fountain of youth. Question is, for all of us to ponder, is what will we do with the extra time? What kind of value will we add to planet Earth, uh, to our Milky Way galaxy, to uh, every other inhabitant on this planet, whether they be cattle or rabbits or whales, uh, our, our brothers and sisters uh, that are living. So here we are. Uh, I'm not sure about how much time I have or Okay, uh, I'm, I'm done. But I want to leave you with just a, a message from my heart, actually from Robert Frost's heart. 
And he wrote a poem called Two Roads that goes like this. Two roads diverge into yellow wood, and sorry I could not be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Though as for that, the passing there warned them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads on the way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wooden eye. You took the one less traveled by, and that made all the difference. I salute all of you at this conference today about your commitment to energy and longer lives. Uh, thank you for this privilege, and uh, God bless, and I'll see you past 100. If you have any questions, if somebody would repeat it clearly, we'd be happy to answer. Jim, we have very poor reception. We're driving. We can hear you perfectly. Okay. I've got one question, Karen. Yes. Okay. Um, one technology. This is for both of you. Pick your own. If there was one healing technology that you wanted to recommend to people, the one that really excites you with its uh, potential for the future, what would be the one that you would like to uh, share with people today? Medical technology? Yes. Uh, if you want to read it, you check out the pods. Yeah. Okay, we, I think we both agreed pretty, uh, pretty clearly. We both agree there is a, uh, uh, a mine, and the name of the mine was SSG, but they drilled down thousands of feet underground and they tapped into mineral water and they're calling it life mineral liquid and there's bottles that you can drink and there's and uh, they're filling pods uh, that you can float in full of this life mineral liquid and um, it's an amazing amazing result so it's like being in your mother's womb um, you're and not only do you have the, the meditative experience and the uh, and a, a, an incredible spiritual experience, these minerals, when your body is full of all these trace minerals that of course we're missing because it's not in our food and it's not in our water and it's, you know, if we're deprived of it. So it, um, it just brings the body back to whole. So people with stage four cancer are healing uh, in a matter of weeks. Uh, uh, if you have a surgery, it's healing. You can't even tell you had the surgery uh, after, um, you know, a certain amount of dives. You might dive twice a day for seven days. You uh, would just feel rejuvenated completely. So I think it's non-invasive. It's total. Uh, uh, it's simple. Uh, it makes sense. And um, where we have the uh, rights to bring it to the United States, which we are in the middle of ordering five right now to bring to our wellness center. So um, a, a trusted friend, a woman we've known for 25 years, introduced it to us, called us, and asked us to, to help her distribute it. And another thing they're doing is they're building 300 cities um, globally, and they'll have these in every city, and every city will have the healing centers. And so they have billions of dollars to begin this, and it, it's only the beginning. So my favorite newest uh, 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 information that's been shared with me is the Life Mineral Liquids and the potential for this to, to heal us so completely and spiritually. So body, mind, and soul, you're, you get in there and you have a spiritual experience as your body is healing. And you have a total cleanse because you don't eat for seven days and you're taking these minerals. And uh, anyway, I don't want to ramble on, but that's certainly both of our uh, favorites at the moment. Brilliant. Thank you. You described that so well and so completely. Very, very exciting. And it totally resonates with me. Uh, that it's a water solution, of course. So, thank you. And, we, and we're water, right? And we vibrate, and it, and it vibrates. It's amazing. It's, it has quantum uh, energy uh, effect when you get in there. From 30,000 feet under the Earth's surface is the origin of the water. Untouched. Untouched. Primary water. Lovely. Right. Has anyone else got any questions? Okay, we've got some questions on Skype. Uh, what is the name of that chip that Dr. Bauer mentioned? Roger. Uh, what is the name of the uh, chip that you mentioned, please? Can you say that again for us? The 
chip from his uh, I like I L I K E. Uh, I have uh, friends. If you email me, I'll get you the connection and send you the site. It's from uh, uh, Switzerland, and uh, the uh, the chip is uh, major with regard to <clears throat> changing the vibrational state of your food, of your body, and of your environment. And um, so, this is it's. Uh, some of it started with uh, Keshi, uh, but it's much more advanced than that. Looks like sacred geometry. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you. And uh, the other question from someone is, um, uh, what is uh, CBD? It's CBD and uh, THC. Would you like to? CBD is cannabidiol, which is from the cannabis plant. Uh, you have an endocannabinoid system in your body with receptors in the brain and other parts of the body. And we now have found that CBD oil, cannabidiol oil, you can just type into your browser, C as in Charlie, CBD? B as in Boyd, D as in David, and you will, uh, you will learn of its efficacy and the research that's being done. A lot of the centers are in Israel uh, with, with CBD oil um, and with some with a little touch of THC will also have a profound impact on malignancies. It also um, is, uh, it is the oil biblically that was used to anoint CBD oil, uh, just like the healing that we know with frankincense and myrrh and gold. It comes, those, comes from hemp. It comes from hemp, which is from the cannabis plant. The best is sativa. There's sativa. And uh, inter rotoralis and, and in, in any event, in, in indica, but sativa is the best CBD oil from that hemp plant. By the way, hemp uh, CBD oil is legal in all 50 states in the United States because it has no THC or less than three tenths of 1%. No psychotropic effects. No, so, no psychotropic effects, although there are 20 states, as you know, that are on the ballot to legalize cannabis for medical purposes this November. Most of them are not in the United States, you might not I know most of you are not in the United States and might not know, but uh, also I'd like to mention that the uh, cannabis is a reactive to your intention. So it is a God-given plant and it's important what your intention is when you're receiving it. So if you put a, a drop of oil under your tongue or you rub, uh, we have it in a massage oil, we have it in a, uh, a pain relieving salve, um, and so there's many ways to do it. You can vape it. I mean, it's not an old-fashioned, necessarily a smoking uh, that, the way to receive it. There, there's many, many ways to receive it. But the important thing is that you set your intention when you receive it because it's a very intelligent plant straight. Uh, so I just wanted to add that. Excellent. Thank you. So uh, just to summarize for, for those who may not have heard that, uh, CBD cannabid, cannabinoids uh, are uh, non-psychotropic. Uh, um, elements associated with uh, hemp as well as uh, with cannabis. So what it means is it's a, uh, a chemical element which is, does not have a, a psychotropic impact on the brain. So Roger was differentiating between that as a, uh, uh, as a healing mechanism, a very, very powerful one, and THC, which is the active psychotropic uh, element associated with uh, cannabis smoking, etc. So uh, cannabinoids. Uh, Non-psychotropic, very, very powerful healing elements. Thank you. We have a direct source to do it from Northern Europe if anybody needs it. We have the kind that uh, strengthens the immune system. Some of it gives you a power boost. They're all different ways and combinations of the CBD oil with the endocannabinoids. And if anybody needs help with that, um, we can help. We just had someone drive two hours to meet us yesterday to get a special formula with 1,500 milligrams, which is a higher dose because her mother was just diagnosed full of cancer, and uh, so she's going to begin uh, treatment with that. The, the uh, cannabis that has the THC has been proven and documented to uh, uh, reverse cancer. So this, the CBD is not as strong in some things. It's very, very healing, but there are times that the the THC actually helps 
helps with pain, helps with PTSD, helps with uh, cancer cells. Uh, so you have to know just, you know, how to diagnose it, really. And that's what we're all just learning. Great. Thank you very much, folks. Oh, um, I'm going to pass you on to... Your yeah. CBD1 receptors are your brain and spine, and CBD2 receptors are around the rest of the body, and there's all kinds of CB receptors, uh, but um, your, it's your, your endocannabinoid system, like Roger said, just like you have a circulatory system, a respiratory system, you have an endocannabinoid system, and it's critical to the, to the function of your entire body, and this uh, feeds that system. So. Absolutely, and it's produced naturally in mother's breast milk as well. Uh, I'm going right. to thank you very much. You're absolutely uh, enlightening, both of you, very much for sharing the information. I'm going to pass you back to Casper now. We're headed to Roger's 55-year class reunion, so sorry about the, uh, the driving while we're speaking. But thank you for being able to connect this way. It's fine. Thank you very much.